going? This is Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along. This is a new Cinema 4D tutorial, and I am going to have a look at bringing in models from Unity into Cinema 4D. And in particular, in this example, I'm going to do this car. I've done a simple little clip here to show how good this can actually look. Um, just pulling models in, texturing them up, and uh, animating them and doing stuff with them. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So as a real quick win, a real easy way to get nice looking models into your animations and stuff, this is superb. Now, in case you're not familiar, Unity is a 3D engine uh, for creating games with, but it has this store for downloading models that have been created by some very talented designers. And some that are on here are free and others cost money. As a general rule of thumb, the ones that cost money will be slightly better quality, but there is some nice free ones as well. I used this realistic car, I guess for licensing reasons, for a project uh, that I did in VR a while back, and it was brilliant, it worked really well. And then recently I was interested in how I could get this into cinema, and sure enough, it was really actually quite straightforward to do. So I thought, let's cover this and have a look. I should mention as well, by the way, I have no affiliation with this designer. I just found this car and I liked it. I thought it was a great example. Unfortunately, you cannot just buy it and download it from the website. You do have to install Unity to be able to download the stuff. This is a bit of a shame for what we're doing, but here I have an installation of Unity. I've created a new project and then you go to the asset store, you find the asset that you want, you download it and import it. Once you've done that, it will show down here in your assets. If we just take a look at this one real quick it comes with a bunch of uh, bits and pieces but if i look in prefabs we've got car static and if i just chuck the first one on boom there we go that is our uh, car but it's in unity this is not much good to us right so what we can actually do is right click on this and do show in explorer and it will pop up here and this is all our files now the ones we are interested in is meshes and textures Okay, because these are the ones we can use in cinema. So I'm going to grab these two and make a copy. And then I have this folder here. I'm just going to chuck that in there. Let's take a real quick look at what we actually have in here. So under meshes, we have the FBX files. Now we have collision mesh, uh, the complete card, the lights, uh, right-handed interior, and so on. Uh, materials. This is all specific for Unity, so I'm just going to delete that out. I don't need that. Under textures, these are the images that we're going to use to create our materials inside of Cinema. And again, this is a really nice example because it comes with everything we need plus some extras. And I will go through these all as we do it. So let's just uh, come back to here. Now go to meshes. Let's have a look. So what we've got here is collision mesh. We could possibly use if we're doing some dynamics, but I probably wouldn't use that one. We've got the car complete, we've got lights, and then we've got individual wheels. So what I actually want, I think, is the car complete plus the lights. So what we do is we come into our cinema and we close the existing project because we're going to do this together. Right, so I'm going to drag in. I'll just do it together. I will grab the complete and I will grab lights and drag them in, and there's all of our settings, which we can just leave as default, that's fine, whatever, uh, and we'll do that on both of them. Then that gives us our lights on one file, and then in the other file, it gives us the complete car. I'm not going to use these project scenes, because this is the FBX, it comes in with some very strange scaling, everything is kind of out of whack, I just don't want to mess about with it, so I'm just gonna grab all of this, Control C, I hit it a bunch of times because sometimes it doesn't always work. And press Control V. It will give us some errors about the textures. We don't care about this, this. We don't care about that at this time. And let's get the lights and we'll do exactly the same because we want everything to be in its correct position. So boom, there we go. We now have our lights and everything. Great, I'm just gonna press Alt G and put that into a group. One thing I've just realized is that that uh, access point is not at the bottom of the car, which is where I want it. So I'm just going to undo that, and I'm going to find something that has an access point that is on the base. There it is, right, so that body has the right place. So with the body selected, I'm going to press Alt-G to put that into a null, take that back out, and now this null, I'm going to put everything in, and what you'll see that does is that gives me that access point. And the reason specifically for that is that if I now rotate this 90 degrees, this is now sitting dead on the floor and if it was up I can zero it out and it will always be dead on the floor and if I go T and scale it scales on the floor so I haven't got to keep trying to reposition it so that's the reason that I would do that if I was really going to the effort I would also probably hit this one here that changes the axis and maybe rotate that 90 degrees as well just so uh, no that's still not right is it uh, I want blue to be up 
this isn't really important. This is kind of one of those that I'm just doing for the sake of it. So let's just go with something like that. There we go, right. So there we go. Now we've got all of our accesses and well, axes, accesses, whatever. It's all set up properly. So the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that obviously right now it's all black and that is because all of these have got material errors which we will fix shortly. I don't want to delete these materials, I want to reuse them. I don't have to, I can make my own, but I'm just going to reuse these just for time. Um, and I'm just going to pop these into a folder in there and call them lights just to keep that tidy. Now, if we take a look inside the body, what we'll see is a bunch of files that are all the same, but we have LOD1, LOD2, etc. So what is LOD? LOD is level of detail. And the idea of this is if you're in a game and you're close to something, you'll get more detail in the model. Whereas if you're further away, it's less polys, it's less detail. Therefore, it makes the, so the game can be a bit more optimized, run a bit better and so on. We're not really interested in this. There is a reason why we might use a bit of this uh, for, for what we're doing here. But for now, let me just actually, let me just just show you this ex exactly what what this is so let's get uh, body lod 0 lod 1 lod 2 and lod 3 so we've got three there and I'm actually going to just hold control make a copy of those outside of the null hide that and I'm just going to delete the texture so that we can see now lod 0 I will place there lod 1 can stay where it is lod 2 can come over here and then lod 3 can come over here we won't really see a lot of detail unless we put on the gurad shader with lines NB and now you can see that one's got a lot of geometry and it's, it gets less and less. So it's good for optimizations and stuff, but for what we're doing, we can we want to use this this bad boy over here with all the detail because we, we're doing renders, so it's absolutely fine. However, if we did want to make our car dynamic in some way, we might want to use this guy here with its lesser geometry so it's quicker for the calculations. What I would actually say is we just need to get rid of the LOD 1s and 2s Maybe a couple of the threes can stay and then we'll just work all on lot zeros. Let's just delete all of them and let's quickly do this. So we'll turn this back on. Let's do a search. We'll do it like that. So we'll search for anything that's got lot one and we'll just delete all of that. Boom, done. Right, and lot two, we're not interested in. So we'll do the same with that. Done. Lod 3, we do want to keep hold of some just in case we want to use them. So maybe we keep the glass, the body, doors. Uh, are we worried about the doors? Yes, we will keep the doors just for now, just in case we want them. Uh, the interior, we're not worried about. The wheels, we'll keep. The disc brakes, we're not worried about. And the brake calipers. Oh. Okay, great. So we are now one step closer. So we'll now go Lord 3 again, and we'll just hide all of that. So holding Alt, we can click and drag down that, and that hides that. Okay, grand. Let's see, where are we up to now? I want to check my scaling just to be sure. Yeah, I had a sneaky suspicion. I just got a glimpse of it when I got close. Do you see how that starts vanishing like that? I mean, that looks pretty groovy, actually, with those lines like that. Um, but yeah, our scaling is set to 0 0.01. So I'm going to scale everything to 1. There we go. And now that's a bit bigger and hopefully it doesn't yeah now we can zoom into it brilliant okay so we're looking pretty good except for it's very dark interesting okay so now i'm going to do these materials i need to get these fixed up but before i do that i actually spotted that i've made a slight error when i was moving uh, everything from here into my untitled uh i actually moved the lights into here into the original one so sorry if that was confusing but just to recap, I was supposed to be copying everything of our model copy into our new project that has all the default uh, settings. Now, this is our default one. There we go. Now, we've got a bit of a scaling issue again here for some reason. This is our standard project. So let's just create a cube and just see how big this all is because this, I think, is massive. So let's just shrink that down. Shrink it down. There's my cube. Right. So there we go. So yeah, I made a bit of a boo-boo earlier, um, but it's no problem. We can fix it now. Um, let's just double check. I'm just going to uh, check what, because I've got a few duplicates in here as well. So I'm just going to delete duplicates. That didn't work. 
Right, we need to fix up our texture stuff because we've got some duplicates. There's a few issues there. We can sort that. It's no big problem. We're now in our proper thing. And the reason I spotted this was because I need to save my project and I'm currently untitled. So we're going to save our project, project, save project as, and I'm going to just put it in the same folder here. Okay, let's call it realistic car. Uh, oh, one, why not? Right, so we'll put it there. And the reason is, is because when I fix the directories, I'm going to ask cinema to actually place a copy of the texture in that folder. So I'll show you exactly what I mean in a moment, but we've saved our file. We're in our correct project and we're ready to start messing around with these materials. So what we've got here, we've got car body, we've got car parts, glass, interior, lights, wheel, body, parts, glass, interior, wheel. So we have a few materials here that are duplicated and hitting um, delete duplicated is not clearing them. So that means that they might be, must be being used somewhere, but I'm just gonna check. So this body, if I just delete that, right, that is definitely the right one. So that's the one we're gonna play with first. So we'll open this up. So let's go back into our textures folder. This is really great because of the fact that this gives us tons of everything we need in what might look a bit confusing at the moment, but in a really good kind of way. For the body, that's actually the, probably the most simple. We only have these albedos. So this is the color channel basically. And then this AO, so that's the ambient occlusion that was baked onto the texture, which is nice. We can use that just to add a little bit more detail into our texturing. And that's all we have for the body. Now here it actually comes with a PSD, which we can open up and we can come in here and change the color to any color we want. So we can choose whatever color car we want. So that's great. So for now though, I'm just gonna use this orange one. What I'll do is I will drag this to my color channel. Now here it will ask me, it's not in the project search path, so would you like me to make a copy of it there? And the, So I wanna say yes. And the reason for that is if I now look at where we've saved this project, we have a folder here called text and that contains that albedo file now. So therefore it keeps everything all nicely together and we can also modify that version and leave the originals alone and it's all great. That's the color done. The next thing in this case will be that ambient occlusion. And now the way I will do that is I will just convert this texture to a layer, come into layer here. And now there's a, there's a really easy way. You can press image and then you can go and find the AO file. However, there's a little trick here which doesn't work as you would expect it to work, but it's quite actually quite handy. Now, if I grab my file here, which is the AO one here, and I click and drag that onto the preview little square there, you would think it would replace it, but it actually doesn't. It asks you if you want to copy it to the location and then it adds it as another layer. Perfect. I'll just put that layer on the top and there we can now see it. If we then change this to multiply, that then puts that over the top and you can see it's adding all that nice shading to the little indents. So it just gives us that little bit extra detail. Now this might be a little too much, so I'm just gonna tone it down a bit. But this is kind of one of those, you do it to, to taste kind of thing. That's that. And next we just need a reflectance channel. So I'm gonna add reflectance. I'm gonna turn off the default specular because that often adds this kind of weird blue tinge to the, to the metal and I don't know, I'm not overly happy with it. So I always turn that one off and then I'll just add a GGX layer. What we do with this one is just simply come to Fresnel and set it to dielectric and uh, dielectric, sorry. And then just give yeah, us a slightly back that down a little. And that gives us a fairly good reflection. The only thing is this is car paint. I don't like the idea that it's rough. So therefore I'm just gonna pretty much, I'm gonna put that to, I'm gonna put it to one. Again, it might, actually no, I'm gonna put it to zero and then we'll worry about it later if it's not right. Um, but that's kind of, that's the, the first thing I'll worry about. That is it for the body channel. So we can now come out of there and we know that there was another one that was labeled body here, which is this one. So I'm just gonna delete that one because we've, we've got this one. Okay, next, car parts. Okay, so we need to have a look here at what one it's using for car parts. Right, so um, car parts, let's see. Uh, interior, interior, interior car parts right now for the albedo which we're going to use for the color we've got two choices we've got chrome or we've got plastic and i think i'm just going to go with plastic for now on this one and i'm going to say yes and then we can see that that filled in a few more gaps 
uh, there's some things that are still not quite right and the reason for that is because you can see here we need a normals file uh, to help us with all the 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 kind of uh, the directions that the textures are kind of facing that's what this is doing I think something along these lines anyway but let's uh, grab that's car interior normal that's car parts normal there we go it's a TGA so I don't get a preview but I'll put that on and then it asks if it wants to put it locally but you watch the car in the background when I press yes there we go it fixes all of my car parts bits that's really cool next I will come into our color and we'll do the same trick where we go layer and then we'll go and find our AO for the car parts we'll put that there say yes move it to the top and set it to multiply and maybe tone it down just a touch okay uh, what is next reflectance we've got this reflectance on so we're going to turn off specular and then I'm going to exactly the same as the last one I'm going to add a GGX right now this is going to be slightly different because if we look in the folder we have this car park metallic thing now we've got the one for the plastic and we've got one for the, for chrome however it's this green so it's it's not exactly how we want to use it in cinema so what we want to do is create a metallic version now I've already actually done this just to double check it but I'll just show you what it was I did here in Photoshop I've opened up the carparts.psd and again really luckily we have this metallics folder and that we can now use because what we're saying is if it's white I want you very shiny if you're black I don't want you shiny at all and gray is all in betweens so we'll save this out as a PNG which I've already done here and we can use this in our reflectance channel under layer mask so let's just pop that in there boom and as, as always and what we should see is that kind of gets a bit fixed there we go and that's looking much better so again we'll put that roughness right down and we'll come down to the Fresnel we'll put that on to dielectric again but we'll actually pull that back uh, about 50% again it's another one we have to tweak it that is that's that's as good for for this so next is glass uh, I'm gonna cheat here I could create a new texture the one that's on there I think looks terrible so it's not right um, I'm gonna cheat and I'm going to use text and then in the glass folder text is available on the website it's just a texture pack um, just I use it all the time because it's just a lot of the standard stuff that saves me having to make it each time because I can just come in here drag and drop that on and boom I've got glass everywhere so that's done you can either use that if you've got it or if you haven't got it just simply go in uh, and create a new material and uh, set the transparency and so on now we'll continue on and our next one here is interior so let's have a look at this our our interior is quite interesting we've got a bunch of stuff on here so let's go through and we'll do exactly the same for all the rest first so first of all we need to find our albedo or albedo I'm not sure really I think it's albedo I don't know right so interior that's metallic interior that's AO there we go interior albedo right great so we put that onto there and say yes cool that's uh, that's doing that I'll tell you what let's pull the interior out so we can actually see what we're dealing with there we go now we need to fix this normals because it all looks a bit funky so once we put the interior normal on this will make quite a difference boom there we go that's fixed up a lot of that now one thing you'll notice here if we go and actually have a look do you see how it looks all blur oh oh that's unity controls you see how it looks all blurry and a bit kind of rubbish well that's actually in in here because the under editor the default texture size is quite small so if we actually put that to something like that a 1k texture we get a bit better detail inside of our preview window so there we go we can now see what we're doing in here and we've got a lot of lovely detail going on this is beautiful so we've done that one we've done that one let's see what other textures we've got we've got AO so we can come into our color change to a layer boom boom AO this is where this is very important because the Cinema 4D AO wouldn't necessarily get all of the areas quite in the same way. So we'll do this. We'll set to multiply. I mean, and to be fair, that actually looks really cool. If you if you render that out uh, just with that as a, as the texture, it can look really good. So um, where was I? I'll uh, just set this back to multiply, and there we go. We can see the differences. It's just yeah, just uh, that little bit more detail. Well, we'll tone it back a little though it doesn't need to be quite so mad right and what is next we should also have we've got an interior detail mask so I guess 
that we can use this in the reflectance channel in the same way. We've got an emissive, so we can actually set that in the lumen, luminance channel. So let's start off with the reflectance. Turn this on, it'll all go uh, very, very shiny. We'll turn off the specular and we'll add that. There we go, now it's all very T1000. Um, and let's just try this. If we go to the layer mask, let's give this one interior mask a try. Yes. Okay, so that gives us very shiny bits around there. So we'll combine that, I think, with a Fresnel. There we go. So now we've got this kind of shiny plastics and then everything else is, is all good. So we'll just, uh, we'll keep that right up. That's probably fine like that. Um, yeah, the roughness look, you can choose kind of, you can set, you know, how, how shiny your plastic would be. Roughness, yeah. Again, it's all done to taste. You can tweak it as much as you want, but that's basically what you're aiming to do. The next will be the luminance. I'm not sure if you need to do this, but I always set this to white and 100%. But now let's come in and we'll grab this. And if we have a look at this file, this is all the, the dials and the little LEDs and stuff. So this is gonna be nice. We put this in the luminance channel. Yes. Okay, and then we'll turn the luminance on. And I'll tell you what, let's just quickly come into here and we'll turn on global illumination and then just set that to interior preview so it's quick. And that will now, it will now use that information that's in there to illuminate these parts. You can just see they're just showing, and there they are. So in the dark, it looks really cool. So um, that's brilliant, right. So that's all of that done. I think that's all of the interior done. Uh, let's just have a look, how did our seats come out? Yeah, they look pretty good. There's a, a, a nice amount of detail in there. Oh, we need to turn off our global illumination for now, otherwise we won't see anything if we hit render. There we go. So that looks absolutely fantastic. Um, let's turn that one off and we'll put that back inside the car. Right, what is next? Uh, lights. Oh, we had um, an interior one. We can get rid of that. And we also had this glass one we can get rid of. Oh, and car parts we can get rid of because we've already used that. Right, so next is lights. Um, this is pretty straightforward. This is gonna be the uh, basically an albedo for the textures. Right, so we just put that on there. Yep, as always. And then we'll just copy that. Go to the Lumens channel, turn it on, paste. There we go, and you see how that's just making those that glow? This is really handy because what this means, what we can do is, we'll just leave that off for now. I'll do the same thing. As I said, I'm not sure if I do need to do it, whether that really makes any difference or not, not sure, but we'll leave the luminance off and we'll check in the next one, wheel, wheel. Oh, we're missing a couple of textures. That's a bit of a shame. I must have accidentally deleted them earlier. Yeah, I did, because we can have a different texture for the different elements. So now that we've got that one, so we've got lights, so let's make a copy of that and we'll just call it tail uh, uh, indicators or signals or whatever you want to say. So we'll call that one indicators uh, and then we'll make another one which we will call brake lights. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now we can actually assign these. So that's my turn. That's my turn. I'd probably actually do left and right if I was really going to this effort. That's my brake lights. And then the rest are all headlights. So that's great. Um, now I think if I turn this on and off. Yeah, you see it just turns on the headlights. So that's pretty groovy. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave that on because it looks nifty with the headlights on Next one the wheels yeah because the wheels they're looking a little bit black at the moment um so let's see if we can get this looking a bit better right uh, find the wheels so they're wonderfully we've got all these different colors of wheels i mean who on earth would want these green wheels on their car i don't know but uh let's just go with the white ones for now though they're not really white they're kind of the typical alloy kind of off gray silvery colory thing but whatever so same as always, let's start with the color, then we'll do the normals so that that fixes up the way it looks because they look a bit funky look. Press yes and boom, they're starting to look like wheels. Next, uh, we'll do the reflectance channel. We'll do exactly the same as we've done every time so far. Make them look a bit T1000. Come down here to mask and have a look in here and see what we've got. So we've got the MTS one here. So we put that into the mask then that tells it don't be very reflective on the uh, tire, but be very reflective down here. And of course, we'll then come to the Fresnel, which will then make it look that little bit kind of more like a wheel. And we can just drop that down a bit just to get a little bit more shininess. 
and we can probably tone down the roughness a bit. That's looking pretty good. Ah, and we can do the same trick here. So layer, go into here. Let's go find our, Al our AO channel. We'll pop that onto there, go yes. That looks fantastic. We'll multiply it and we'll just tone it down a little bit. And there we go, okay. And the final one was another wheel, so we can just delete that, right. And boom, there, look at that. That looks fantastic. Yeah, not too difficult to set up really. Yeah, no, grand. Okay, so obviously it looks flat as hell because it needs lighting. Uh, so we could set up lighting here, or once again, I'm afraid I'm going to cheat and I'm gonna use my Infidio Pro uh, Infinity Studio. So I'll just drop that into the scene. Boom, like that, and I'm just gonna hit render and look at the difference. So Infidio is, like I say, it's my lighting studio. It's available on the website. You don't have to use it if you don't have it, but it's it just makes life much easier if you just wanna get a quick, nice, easy result. So if I zoom out, yeah, it's, it's the car is a little small, so we'll just zoom that up a bit. And let's go and have a look. Uh, cool, so we're looking pretty groovy at the moment. That's the basics of it. We've now got it, it's ready. So the rest is just my own little tweaks to see kind of how I can make it look a bit better. Now, one thing I've got here is I like to have a, uh, a reflection going across the window at an angle. So I'm gonna come into Infidio and I'm going to find my lighting. And this is the key light that I think I'm seeing reflected here. No, it isn't. Oh, that's on the bonnet there. So maybe it's the hair light. Uh, da, 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 da. There, there we go. So I'm just gonna put that width up a bit so that it goes right across the car. There we go. Let's see, what else can we do? I think maybe we will drop the body and the interior and the lights. Let's just drop that down a bit. So there we go, we've lowered it. <laughs> that looks a bit cool. Then I'm gonna grab the caliper and the wheel front left press rotate and I'm gonna turn that because again, you have to do that. Okay, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I should really do the other one as well, but to be fair, I can't see it. Uh, front right, front right. Oh no, oh, that's rear right. What am I doing? Oh, it's there, there we go. Yeah, see, I could turn it, but you can't see it anyway, but it is over there. <laughs> and obviously we have to now pivot our angle like that. There we go. Let's get a little bit more of that. Uh, something along those lines. Let's create a camera, um, maybe a 50 mil lens, so it looks a bit beefy. There we go. Um, set that to 0 0.6, go into the above view, and I want my focal point to be somewhere around this front wheel. And then uh, come into here, set it to physical, turn on depth of field, set it to progressive. I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion. And that reminds me, whenever you're using ambient occlusion, if you have glass in your scene, it's very likely you'll wanna do this because ambient occlusion and glass do not work well together. Now here's the example. So this is obviously, this is a super quick render, um, but you can see how these look like they're tinted but they're actually not. So I'm gonna just use my snipping tool here and I'll just cut that out just so that it keeps it so we can remember. And now I'm just gonna come in and do this little trick. So we need to find the glass, which if I remember is inside of body, there it is. So we right click on here and we want to do render tags compositing. And here is scene by AO. We basically untick that and put that on anything that's got glass on it. Now when I hit render out, I'll bring up the original and there's the difference that that makes. So I'm still using my AO for the, the rest of the scene, but it's just not using it on that piece of glass, which means that it doesn't look like it's tinted out. So really handy little trick that. We are looking pretty, pretty good actually for, for a fairly quick result. I think I'm just going to do my good old fashioned trick of turning on the floor reflection, put that up a bit, maybe blur it to 2%. Uh, and I would say, yeah, right, let's turn on global illumination so that we get the glow from the headlights. It's probably very minimal, doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it's something, it looks kind of good. And there we go. We are looking pretty sweet, I would say, uh, for not a huge amount of effort. I, I would say the main thing you want to worry about at this point would be going in and, and fixing up all your reflections to make sure that everything is reflecting in the way you would want it to. Um, everything else though, I think it's come out really well. So one thing I will just mention is because this is all separated, we could rig this. We could do stuff where we set up the suspension for the wheels and so on. If you remember my video from the start, I actually 
I did this. I set up the suspension so that you would see the car sort of bounce up like that. And I thought that looked really cool. So, uh, yeah, drop us a comment if you want me to do a tutorial on the suspension. Um, and maybe we'll, yeah, we'll have a look at that with this same model uh, and see what we can kind of do with it. It's nice, though, as well, just because this car particular, like, so it's got the wipers. So we could animate the wipers going if we wanted. We could animate the door. Uh, the doors opening and closing, uh, yeah, so there's there's kind of quite a lot we could be doing with this if we wanted to. So I love this, I think this is absolutely great and it's a really nice way to get some kind of really cool nice models into your scenes really quickly uh, and sort of make use of a lot of these guys talents that are making all this amazing stuff. That's basically the end of this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you get told when I put a new video up, um, especially if you wanna see this uh, suspension thing. Um, it really does help me know whether people actually enjoy my nonsense or whatever. Um, and yeah, feel free to leave a comment and tell me what you think. Uh, if you spotted anything that maybe we could be doing differently, uh, then let me know. I'm always willing to, uh, to learn as I go along. Yeah, that's basically it. So thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.